this pallet is black walnut. At least the bottom parts are. How did I discover it? Well, it was a full-sized pallet. You can see there's only two slats on it now. And I was just in an attempt to clean this mess up back here. Uh, I was cutting up all the junk pallets and burning them. I cut this one in half and you won't believe how I recognized it. By the smell. While I was chainsawing it in half, as soon as I recognized that smell, I stopped. And I ran it over to the miter saw and cut a piece of it to make sure. And sure enough, it's black walnut. And you would think, after having s sat out here in the elements for who knows how many years, you would think that it's ruined, rotten. But I think black walnut is, it must be, in incredibly resistant. Because let's go inside the shop and take a look at uh, the parts of it that I salvaged. You won't believe the condition they're in. Luckily for me, I have a lot of black walnut just from stuff that I've milled. It's not, well, it is, it's kind of rare here, but, and it is expensive, but it's not as rare as plenty of places in the world. So, uh, how long is it? Uh, I'll give you dimensions, hold on. Let's call it two and three eighths, three and a quarter, and 20 inches long. If you're not familiar with it, black walnut is, it's the creme de la creme. It's the nicest wood there is to work with. It's pleasant, stable, not too hard, not too soft. Grain is lovely, sands well, but its claim to fame is its lovely color. Look at this. Here's another one. <laughs> I use it for little things like this where Beauty is the goal. This is just a coat of oil or two. I didn't even try on these things. They're just little trinkets that are sitting around the shop. If I were asked to describe it, I would say that black walnut has a chocolatey sort of quality to it. Nevertheless, its value is such that you don't see it as a bottom tread on a pallet very often at all. So the problem that I have is getting these nails out and I was very cautious. I took out the ones that I could and I really need some out of the box thinking to get the remainder. So I'm going to have to try some experiments here. An already cured board of this thickness is extremely desirable and as such I just can't even afford to have one of these nails break off inside. Failure is not an option. Now you might be tempted to tell me tap down on the nail first with a hammer and you know the other simple, simple tricks that please don't insult me I probably already know. I've already tried that, most of the easy tricks, and I'm still stuck with these. One last resort is that I can soak it again, give, put moisture back into the wood and hopefully get the nail out that way. But I'm afraid that I might get new checking since this, well this has been sitting in here for Let's, let's say at least two months, three months maybe. Well, time moves faster than I realize. It could be four months. But the drying has probably caused it, caused the wood to contract really tightly around my nails. So I'm not sure. One idea that I have is to heat them with a blowtorch. But I'm concerned that it might actually weaken the metal with the nail. It would be great to put my hand here for leverage while I'm trying to pry out the other ones. Also, if I'm going to perform an experiment, I think I should do it on this one because if the nail breaks off in here, I can still cut my losses and just cut this board off. I'm also thinking about coming up with something to get some more leverage here. I, you know, I came up with something a couple months ago when I took out a couple of the first nails 
and I should have filmed it or wrote it down or took a picture of something. It's the worst when you make progress on the front and then you lose that progress to time. If you're sitting here right now screaming at the screen because you know of a way that's certain, uh, it doesn't do me any good at this point because by the time you're watching this, the time has passed. I wish you were here now helping me, but uh, your commentary won't do me any good. <laughs> Unfortunately, too bad your comments didn't move through time. Could save me a lot of hassle. The idea here is to get this nice and hot. And then it will char the wood that's immediately surrounding it, in theory. And as you know, charred wood is way softer than seasoned black walnut. So the question is, how hot do I get it? Red hot? And will this weaken the metal? I mean, it shouldn't, really. Or does it? Will it anneal this metal? I don't know. Stay tuned. Strike one. Not the best idea, though. I think my brain was still functioning in solder mode where I have to hurry, but actually the nail doesn't have to be hot for this to work. Let's see if I can get you to be able to see what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, I think it actually worked. I mean, that thing was just immovable before. Okay, don't jump the gun. Think, think. Nice and slow, see? That's the way we do it. Okay, that reference is way too obscure, you won't get it. It was, I think it's from the Flintstones. That's the way to do it. Nice and slow. Look at that. Let's try it again. I'm giving you a macro shot to make you feel like you're in the action. You don't even have to wear safety glasses. I'm not worried about the surface because that will have to get planed off to use this anyways. As long as it's not too deep. Jeez, hard to squeeze. I'm losing arm strength. Actually, we're supposed to start weight exercising again tonight on the rings. So maybe I'll man up a little more. <laughs> Nothing. Come on. So be sure to leave a comment about how tough you are in comparison to me. <laughs> I love those comments. Oh. Slow and steady. How many of these do I have to do before I know that it's working? They were virtually immovable before. It feels as though this is hardened. It must be because where I've applied the heat, it does seem to have annealed it. Ah, all of this is incidental though. What matters is, is the heat actually loosening this up? Well, considering that this one is headless, that suggests that I gave it my best effort, right? In two directions. So how about we try it on this one, and if it's a success, I'll consider this method as useful. 
Third time's a charm, as they say in some circles. I tell you what, lady propane sure is one of nature's finest gases. <clears throat> it's in the center of the board, so I can't get any leverage. Let's move this operation to the floor. Oh my goodness, that's phenomenal. That, ladies and gents, is the feeling of pure satisfaction. Listen to the sound, it's like poetry. This means something. This is important. This is a couple rare earth magnets on some tape, and it's my stud finder. But it's also useful for scanning over something like this before I run it through my planer. So in the interest of making this video 100% satisfying, if I can get those other two nails out, I will run this board through the planer. And then you'll be able to appreciate why I went through so much trouble. All right, update. <laughs> I kept this one on for a long time because I was trying to get a snappy picture for the thumbnail. And it just, it pulled right out like, like nothing. And I will let you know that I have tried every single one of these nails just looking for, you know, any of them that would come off or come out really nice and easy. I didn't want to resort to using a torch. So I can report to you that this method works with pretty reasonable certainty. That is awesome. Wow, if you've never seen this before, smash that. It works, it definitely works. I was able to get every single nail except these last two and I just want to make a couple points before I forget. When you're heating the nails, for efficiency, aim so that the nail behind it also warms up. I'm using the torch to warm two nails at the same time. The next point is that you should heat the head first. Once this head is glowing red, it's holding a lot of heat. Now I can move down and take it as low as I can get it. And then I keep it red hot here for about a five pound. That's it. Now to the next one. Head first. Once it's red, move down as low as I can without damaging the wood. And as soon as its center body gets hot, five pound. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. This is just how it happened to be for what I'm doing. Next point, use the vice grips really low on the nail. I found when I had it up too high, it snapped more often. Now each claw of my Wonder Bar grabs on one of the vice jaw, grip jaws. And now the most important point of all, if you heard nothing else in this video, pay attention to this. Do not make a snapping motion. You want even pressure as slowly and evenly as you can apply it. If you have to, give it a very little bit, like a pulse. But avoid the temptation to, to snap if you can at all. Let's run these through the planer and see if we can't restore some of their magic.
Wow. Who knew that you'd have wood like this inside of a pallet? I think it's sort of interesting the way that a nail goes in and forces the wood around it to split. And then that split holds the nail in by compressive force. In a way, these flaws have a kind of beauty. Maybe I'll even be able to exploit that in whatever project I use these for. And look at the... Imagine what the diameter was of giving these growth rings. Must have been a big old tree. That is a mess.